Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Flowering On Together. This interview is with Steph Turpin from Fair Enough Flowers based in London. Um, I will link to her fabulous website and Instagram. Her Instagram is a feast for the eyes. Um, so enjoy the interview. So we are Flowering On Together today with Steph Turpin of Fair Enough Flowers. Hi, Steph. Hello, my lovely. How are you? Oh, all the better for seeing your face and your beautiful <laughs> setup. Totally in love with all of those pictures. So, Why, thank you. So tell me, where are you right now? So this is my living room. Um, and these were all collected from Kempton Antiques Market, uh, uh, which is on a couple of times a month uh, nearby. And so, yeah, I go and hunt for old flower photos, pictures, paintings, whatever. And then Beautiful. stick them in my living room. Yeah, gorgeous. I love it. Best background I've had. I apologise for my uh, white out background. <laughs> um, so, um, fair enough flowers. Yes. Um, YouTube um, needs to know everything about your beautiful life and business. So we can see the bulk of your um, petal passion on Instagram, can't we? That is... Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so my... Um, my website is rubbish. Ignore that. I am working on that. Um, <laughs> but I think Instagram is just brilliant for florists. It's just a way of showing what we do. It's just a perfect kind of way of showing people what we do and what yeah. we love. So, I, think, yeah. I mean, you've got like a crazy amount of followers now. And I think it's because it's just so bloody beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I get now and again, even from friends, like, how have you got so many Instagram followers? Which I think is a little bit offensive. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but um, I'm, I have no idea. I haven't paid them. That's a, a question I do get asked quite a lot. Uh, never paid for anybody. They just, I don't know, they just come, just be nice to people, stick up nice photos and be nice to people. Absolutely. Everyone loves the beauty. It's gorgeous. So tell me, when did Fauna Flowers begin? How did you become a florist? So I've always loved flowers. When I was younger, I used to play. I used to go to my grandma's garden every weekend and cut her sweet peas and hydrangeas and roses. She let me. She was a good grandma. <laughs> uh, and I pretended to marry my brother. He was a good brother, too. Uh, every weekend we used to get married you know, flower crowns and everything, Amazing. Uh, even him. I <laughs> 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 don't know how I did it. I was only little. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's kind of my love of flowers came from her garden because she loved flowers and loved gardening. Um, and then I kind of went off piece of it. I loved sports as well. So I was always going to be a sport. A sp I wanted to work in sports marketing. Um, and then... I got a job at BBC Sport, where um, which I loved, but it kind of flowers were kind of always my thing. And when BBC Sport moved back up or moved to Salford, I retrained, um, and yeah, that was it. So that was in two thousand and four, and then we opened um, uh, our beautiful shop in two thousand and five, um, which we had for five years, five and a bit years. Um, and so where did you where did you train when you said you were you trained retrained? Did you go to a college or so I trained I trained um so I'd kind of worked in a couple of little flower shops generally, but then I did I did um I went to Jane Packer and did a career course. She was kind of the person whose flowers I loved the style of. Um yeah, so I kind of I did a career course there and I loved it. Um, and they kind of said, you've got a really good eye and you should kind of carry yeah. on doing that. So, yeah, it was it was good. It's um, It was good. It was I really enjoyed it. And it was a good group of people. I think I'm the only person from the that from our kind of group that went on to do anything. I think the other people kind of just did it for something to do because <laughs> they had <laughs> some money. <laughs> um, yeah, so I didn't do the traditional route of getting into floristry amazing which, yeah so, um, so now um so fair enough flowers to, so the bulk of your business is weddings yeah uh now yeah so when we had the shop we kind of did everything we still do everything but um probably 95 percent of our work now is weddings um 
we do about 70 a year. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So at the time that I'm talking to you now is um, coronavirus time. So we're still kind of locked down. Um, so yeah. life has changed somewhat. Um, but in your kind of normal, like fair enough flower lifetime of weddings, what, what's your kind of normal week look like? Um, so today should probably, Wednesday, be, um, it would be a flower pickup day. Uh, so for a Saturday wedding, for example, we would um, order our flowers on Saturday afternoon after any weddings. Between Saturday and Monday, we order our uh, flowers. Um, unless there's something special, um, which you have to order, you know, in advance. Um, and then we would pick up depending on the month or, you know, how warm it is yeah. uh, and how, so for peonies, we would usually pick up on a Tuesday to open for a Saturday wedding. So you kind of, we work out when we need things to be picked up. So between Tuesday and Thursday, we would pick up flowers for a Saturday wedding. So, um, yeah, so we would... It just feels so weird not doing that every... I think we should have had three weddings this week. Wow. Um, they've all been postponed. And last week we should have had four. And yeah, it's just weird. And I just feel sorry for everybody that has to go through this. Mm. Well, generally, but yeah. It will come again, though. The time will come again. All their time. Oh, God, yeah. And that's what we've got to focus on. Try and focus on the... Yeah, I'm, promis- I'm promising them all to make them even prettier next year. <laughs> so God help me. <laughs> Um, and so um tell me about your team so who how, what's who's in your team so there's it's family based <laughs> uh so rob uh and my mum helped so there's kind of three of us uh pretty much kind of full time and then we have a team of freelancers that we we just use um it's just the easiest way to be able to uh bring in people that are kind of either good at what we need to do that week or um just you know just we have we have a team of freelancers that we use often so it's they're kind of like an you know an outer team we're all a team but it's just the way of doing it it's just the way kind of our our business works you can't um it's it's just better yeah that makes yeah that makes sense yeah so um, so you've been going since 2004, so that's a long time. Um, that's like before me as well, so that's how many years No, ago? 2005. We opened on the 1st of July, 2005. So what's that, 15, 15 years? You were before us, just, I think. 2006 I started, so... How did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I never knew that. So yeah, it's interesting <laughs> to see what we've seen over that time, like the styles of flowers and everything changed, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. Like looking back on, we were just talking about it today, actually. Looking back on like our our work when we first started, it's similar, but it's not similar. Is <laughs> <laughs> in my bouquets now, I would say, unless kind of weaved grass around the edges and yes. like, collars and things like that, which were like the thing, you know. That yeah, that it'll was, come back. I'm sure it will. Just like dried flowers having a moment and everything. Exactly. Yeah, I'll come back. Oh. Um, all those beautiful roses we just desecrated by putting pins and diamonds. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> I know. And goldfish bowls. Although I can't quite that look. So goldfish bowls with better, with grass in them, and then like tulips twirled in them. Yeah. Everyone thought they were magical. Yeah, and and so easy to deliver. Like the easiest thing. To yeah. Do. World. you know have to negotiate water spilling everywhere or you know a chicken wire or whatever foam leaking or whatever you can just like there you are boom it's done yeah yeah so, every, every time we put them in the shop and like a you know a bloke would come in for flowers they would like stare at like the goldfish was like oh, what have you how have you done that how have you got them in there <laughs> anyway so yeah when everyone was like and yeah they were like the best things to do for weddings weren't they like yeah. all done <laughs> anyway they'll come back so tell me, in your kind of, like, the weddings that you've had, can you tell me some career, like, high moments, like, your favourite weddings that you've done? Or, I mean, obviously, they're all favourite, but... Uh, oh, no, no, can I? Can I tell you a favourite wedding? I don't know if I can tell you a favourite wedding. Or, like, not one that sticks in your memory that you've loved? Uh, there's one... There's one that I loved... 
just because I worked with her for so long, she had booked us and then she got ill. Um, and so she postponed her wedding um, for a couple of years. She wanted her hair to grow back and, you know, for it to be whatever. So I just worked with her for so long and she loved our work from the start. And it was just, we had just had a bit of a, um, you know, kind of a connection from the start. So I think it probably was would be her wedding. Um, only because we worked with her for like, you know, we were in touch for so long. Yeah. And Gorgeous. yeah, and then I think it would be her. Yay. Yeah. It's hard to choose. It was, beautiful. it was a beautiful wedding. How about you? Where's your favorite? Am I allowed to ask? That's what you're on. Um, I can't answer it though. I've not, yeah, I don't know. You have to give me time to think about it. I don't know. I do like at the moment, like last year, we did quite a lot of big installation y things. And yeah. I like that, like the challenge of that. That's that's cool. But then I also really like just really simple so you can just deliver it and, and go. <laughs> so it varies. Yeah. It? yeah. I think, yeah, I think it probably as well, one of our, I always um, wanted to do a wedding at Ainho Park, um, which is like an Instagrammer's dream. Um, so when we first did our first wedding there, I think that was quite a dreamy thing, just because I thought I would never do a wedding there. Um, yeah. yeah, and we've done quite a lot there now. But yeah, it's beautiful. They have a floating giraffe. You do, do you know it? Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, yeah I've not been, but I look, yeah, absolutely. I've seen it on, on the gram everywhere and looked at it. Yeah, it looks bonkers and all the yeah. statues and all sorts of stuff, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes, and I'm a big, yeah, I like a bit of taxidermy. Yes. So, um, <laughs> who doesn't love a floating giraffe? You've done it, amazing. <laughs> and then in terms of any kind of other career moments that like stick out in your, in your mind that you're thinking like, I'd like to do this or you know you were saying you'd want you wanted to do one at um, that venue is there any place that you haven't flowered yet that you'd like to or collaborations you'd like at the moment um I don't I don't know really there's not there's not kind of any Anything kind of Cotswoldy because I love the Cotswolds and I love kind of so like a you know uh, if someone wanted to take over um, now I can't think of where I want to be to it I can't that's remember the hotel name we met at the Cotswolds huh? that's where we met on the way to the Cotswolds yes we did <laughs> yes we did. That was the first time we ever met yeah yeah so we first met chatting on Twitter didn't we and then um, yeah. randomly stayed in the same hotel the same night totally randomly. So strange. Across the across the corridor, <laughs> that was so weird. Um, and I've remembered <laughs> at Barnsley House. It's one of my we. I've never done a wedding there. I love it. It's kind of one of my favourite places. Um, oh, yeah. So put it out there into the world. That's it. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Barnsley House. If you're getting married in Barnsley House, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that or. Um, I quite fancy doing a, we- a proper wedding abroad, right? Just for the, just just for the. I've had a couple of brides that were getting married abroad and booked us for a, a wedding abroad, and then both of them changed as it kind of went along, and they ended up having them here. Right. Um, well, about so yeah. This is nicely onto uh, your second home, the Maldives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I love it. it. Said, yeah, well, in the future, I'm going to set up my uh, my estate, my flower school, or my uh, wedding parlor, or whatever, in the Maldives. Thoughts? On I that? am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's my aim for the future. So, when you sent over the little few little questions that you might ask me, um, and one of them was, uh, what what do you want? Kind of your future hopes for um, fair enough flowers? It would be. Um, a Maldivian branch of Fair Enough Flowers. Amazing. Amazing. I think it would be amazing. And their flower shops, well, they don't have as good a, you know, they they don't have the, the flowers, you know, they can't, haven't got the availability that we, we've got, obviously. But, they could, yeah, they've got, they do a lot of croissant-based arrangements. But, um, <laughs> but then they've got loads of orchids and, you know, yeah. they've got beautiful stuff still. So, yeah, I think it would be amazing to do. I mean, you'd, you'd I, I, I have your peonies. Huh? You'd have to sacrifice your peonies, wouldn't you? I know. No, because what I would do, 
<laughs> I would I I don't worry about that it would be fine it's something I need to work on but I will work on it yeah, yeah. um I did I did help flower a wedding in the Maldives it was a blessing they can't have um official weddings so it was like a just a you know just a yeah yeah I think beautiful yeah yeah um so we made lots of arches going towards the uh, Indian Ocean. It was really, really pretty, and I got so sunburnt. It was ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was lovely. I'm thinking, I, I, just, I just have to do it. I just need to play with flowers, even though I'm on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> and they were all, because, because I think a lot of things in the Maldives, like with everybody that works there, it's quite like, how many followers have you got on Instagram? Was It's yeah. kind of it's one of their first questions. So they yeah they they were like oh ooh, you've got a lot of followers and then so they were very excited that I was helping them do a wedding and I was very excited to be helping so win-win 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> when it's February is the time you normally go isn't it every year and then I always like after Christmas I'm like oh god she's gonna post again she's gonna be there and then I just live vicariously I'm in freezing Yorkshire and I just look at you like living it up in Maldives thinking oh I thought you were going to say you unfollow me <laughs> no I'm always in that I'm, it's amazing it's ace I love it it's a special place I think it's it's just what my, it's I think the wedding being a wedding florist is so stressful and it's stressful from kind of April to November or December I mean yes it's less stressful in November but then you've kind of got Christmas and whatever so yeah it's just you know I don't have children and um so I'm allowed I've just got a cat that's meowing um <laughs> so yeah it's kind of just my one escape of the year amazing and, um, I love it I, I love it's a tradition and I love it. it's the best tradition ever isn't it <laughs> you are right well done <laughs> yes it is Yay! um so let me hang on I, I kept talking to you that's the thing and I forget what I've got to ask you so in terms of um, the future so the Maldives we're going to set up in the Maldives that's great that's solid um what do you think like attracts people to book you like what is your kind of signature fair enough flowers style um sorry my cat she wants to come and play um uh just anything pretty I think I don't I don't think I have a set style per se I just deal with pretty things lots of petals uh we're kind of we we're a lot more flower like flower heavy in our designs um yeah kind of lots of peonies garden roses things that smell beautiful more than an actual style um and just lots of flowers it's just just prettiness I think people book us because we do pretty flowers I think that's I think that you do have a style like like I would describe it as like um like full glamorous like he- like you say petal heavy but you don't like and also I think you like your choices of flowers um there are certain things that you I never see you post that you've used so you you, obviously, you do have like a set kind of palette of things that you go to but then that, you know it's amazing that's why people come to you I think we do we do use we do use I think it's we use everything seasonal we don't really use gerberas but apart from that we don't use spray carnations but apart from that we'll pretty much use anything seasonal um it's just for my Instagram I've just I decided mm, I don't know when I decided a couple of years ago um I just wanted my Instagram to be like quite um flowery which is a stupid thing to say but I did not not post on my main Instagram um kind of ceremony setups and stuff but we do that on the stories bit so although if you kind of look at my thing it's very like rose we just you you think we just use roses peonies ranunculars sweet peas and you know whatever stocks (laughs) we do we do use everything we just (laughs) I just I think huh say again I was going to say, but you cu- you've curated it to look like that, to attract certain people, do you think? No, I don't, oh, not on purpose. I just, I literally just put up, on Instagram, I just put stuff up that I think looks pretty. Um, and I think 
a garden rose looks prettier than a bunch of lisianthus, even though I love lisianthus. But do you know what I mean? Just for, for like, yeah. So I think that's really, but I think if, and I, people obviously do watch our stories and then you'd see more of what we do elsewhere. Um, yeah. You know, we do lots of hanging stuff and um, which um, I sometimes put on my main Instagram, but um, yeah, anyway, maybe I'm going to change my Instagram up a bit because it's, you know, I don't want it to be same, same, same. Oh no, it's beautiful, beautiful. I'm on it. Keeping it. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, but there's only so there's only so many. Anyway, I think I'm boring myself with it. But um yeah. Uh so yeah, we do use stuff. I think I think just people kind of book us because they've seen something that they like. Uh I don't know. And so you, you do end up doing similar-ish stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are buying what they see. Yeah. I think people kind of you they you know if they kind of see our if they see something on Instagram or Facebook or whatever then they're like oh, I love this one and we don't copy but it will be a similar style we do ha- we do have a style I just don't really know what it is <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's bizarre because people kind of comment and say I saw this on Instagram and I knew it was you straight away and I was like oh okay so people know my style it's not me it's not you um <laughs> who do you think like inspires you like now like when you're choosing your flowers is it the flowers or is that like um is there other florists that you see that you're inspired by their work or um like art or where do you where do you take inspiration from um to start with it I I it was Jane Packer I love the way she she kind of put together her flowers and the her overall thinking of kind of grouping flowers as if they're growing rather than you know having one flower one flower one flower um and I love that um now I take my inspiration just from what flowers are available um like the shapes and the textures and the colors and I I look on Instagram and Pinterest and just social media just there you know I follow some brilliant people um that make lovely flowers every day so you can't help but take inspiration from Mm. kind of there if you see something you think oh that color is color kind of you know the colors work amazingly or whatever um yeah I think I try I try and not kind of copy I want to be my own thing do you know what I mean yeah 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 so I just take inspiration from kind of what flowers are available in whatever season um and and work with it there's never been a better time to be a florist in terms of what's available like yeah it's amazing and when you first started to what there is now like even things like um like clematis and stuff like you know even just like cut clematis like that that was never a thing like five years ago and now it's beautiful and it lasts and yeah 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 and butterfly ranunculus they weren't a thing were they and now they're like one of my favorite things yeah they can be Um, though. I think they can be tricksy but the colors are bonkers yeah the pink one's just incredible they're kind of you know that sheen to them beautiful it is is mad Um, so if you had like free reign, if someone said, look, um, Steph, I love your style. I'm getting married. Um, I just want you to like flower it for me and say it's like spring or summer, like you choose a season or autumn, whatever. Like what now? Like what would you do? Um, okay. It would probably be in May because that's when all of my favorite flowers. So am I, do I get to pick the flowers? You get to pick everything. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> um, so it would probably be in May uh, because then I can have ranunculus and peonies. Yes. Um, and sweet peas and lily of the valley. Uh, just everything I love. Um, there would definitely be something hanging because I love, I think it makes such a, uh statement i love it i love it yeah um there'd probably be a couple of arches nice just because i think 
you know, they look amazing, sorry, there's something fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, just lots of flowers, lots of beautiful flowers, probably... Uh, Tell me about the colour palette. Now that's a silly question. So. <laughs> think <laughs> um all the pastels i think i think that's my all like literally all the pastels like peach pinks pale blues um even maybe a bit of pale yellow ish probably um okay. yeah kind of uh very almost kind of country gardeny um so like this year we had quite a lot of um you know kind of full aisles of flowers um which i love so there'd definitely be that going on maybe an asymmetric fireplace um nice. yeah just just beautiful beautiful flowers so you can kind of see the flowers and smell them just smell is really important to me like smelly flowers yeah, May is definitely the perfect time. I am dying with hay fever at the moment, so May is definitely the perfect time for it. Oh, bless you. And I actually, it's ridiculous, totally, literally. It would be a florist and have hay fever. I like, I think definitely scent is so important. Um, I really want you to come and teach in the flower school again, because it was gorgeous that day when you came to teach with us. Yeah, we should do something, definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe this year when we can move places, we should yeah. do something. Yeah, when the world gets back to normal, that would be awesome. Because every, like, everyone loved that day. It was like, it was amazing. And it's so interesting to see like how um, everyone does things. Like I remember, do you, do you use pot tape to tie off your bouquets? And it being like, yeah. what's she doing? Oh my God. Yeah, you thought I was the weirdest person in the world. <laughs> and then uh, we had gold leaf on succulents, didn't we as well? Awesome. Yeah it's just a good way of getting a little bit of metallic in that's all um yeah but yeah I think my bouquets aren't as loose as other people so like where where I was tying them just tying them off with string or whatever it just didn't um, I think even at Jane Packer I think that's they kind of always did it with tape mm -hmm. and it, it's kind of how I learned if you know what I mean and then I kind of or when if it's a looser one then I would probably use just string and whatever but yeah it just works really well for me which but uh, yeah I, I still think about your look of shock and like what what are you doing um, yeah I use I do use pot tape quite a bit now actually for that for that strength I think as well because um because especially if I'm doing something like front of facing and quite big you've got so many mm. stuff in there that you need that like support don't you with tape but yeah yeah forgot about that that's funny yeah oh I haven't <laughs> <laughs> I still think about your shocked face every <laughs> night before I go to bed <laughs> um, we need to talk about our, um, our other Yorkshire love affair which is Betty's I am missing yeah. Betty's. <laughs> um, yeah when you come up we need to go and uh, have a little adventure in Betty's don't we it's it's probably after the Maldives, it's probably my second favourite place in the world. That's, that's yeah. something to be said for that, that's for sure. <laughs> Betty's with you, that's my second favourite place in the world. <laughs> um, I, um, I interviewed um, Paula Pryke last week and I didn't realise she studied in Yorkshire for three years. Um, oh, wow. And, yeah, and uh, like 10 minutes from where I live, actually, and she was she was talking about Betty's as well. I was like, oh, my God, I think this is like a florist thing. We're all just, we just make a beeline for, for good cake and good hot chocolate. I think a lot of florists have got a very sweet tooth. Yeah, that's it. Well, that leads me on to my next question. So when you are in the workshop, what is your kind of, like, you've got three weddings on, it's really busy, um, and, you know, you're just going to have, like, an all-nighter. What is your kind of snack that you're going to keep going to? Um, okay. Uh, so I'm not meant to be having any dairy at the moment. Okay. Um, so a coconut mocha decaf, because I'm not meant to have caffeine either. Okay. Uh, from Costa Coffee uh a big one yeah and <laughs> probably and then now saying i'm not meant to have any dairy uh, uh, probably a small pile of kinder sticks oh really uh, kinder sticks. i love them yeah they're good i love them and they love me <laughs> not so much my diet but you know the rest of it um yeah probably that it has to be something you can kind of just pick up and Yes, does it? it not, does it not? 
<laughs> it gets lost in like all the green. What do you eat? Oh, uh, we have a bis- we have a big Betty's biscuit tin. Um, oh yeah, yeah a biscuit's I, a good thing. I try, good. I try and get like um, you know oat cakes, like chocolate oat cakes. Um, yeah, and cereal bars, but um, Haribo. So bad. Uh, it's just rubbish. It's just rubbish. I need to stop eating it. Um, but yeah, a lot of oat cakes. If I know it's going to be a long slog, but always chocolate. Always, always chocolate at work. Yeah. Never, like three feet away from chocolate. And even at home on the lockdown, I've had to have pick and mix delivered. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. I'm not a massive like Haribo fan, so I can take or leave those. But yeah, like Tony's Chocoloni, someone on his Instagram just... I don't know. I don't know. They must have said this is the best chocolate, and that then I'm just completely hooked. That's funny. That's what um, I was Joe. Um, I asked Joe Munson the same question yesterday, and she said that chocolate too. It's, good it's cho- amazing. Yeah, it's good chocolate. Yeah. yeah, and my lovely florist friend Martin of Martin and the Magpie. Oh yeah. He um is he's Dutch, so when he gets because it's a Dutch company, um he came back from holiday last year and sent me like one of each of the Tony's Chocoloni things. Amazing. So that's a good florist friend, isn't it? Yeah. Tell you what, yeah. when you back in the day when we used to um get the flowers delivered um from the flying Dutch run, we used to get Sarup and waffles quite a lot, or Stroop and Waffle, I don't know how you say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like the sta- staple like flower shop treat because that's what came with the flowers. They used to bring, yeah. Need to get on my Dutch man, get some more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> don't you tell husband. your lovely husband. Yeah. Um, I don't, <laughs> if you were going to be, if you like, if there was somebody talking to you and they said, I want to be a florist, what is your advice to people for like the flower industry? Where do you think the industry is going? Like, any thoughts on the future? Um, I would say do all your research I do get so many um questions and kind of probably I don't know between five and ten a week of people think saying I want to become a florist have you got any um like hints and tips and I would say just do as much research as you can look at who is local to you being a florist um and kind of look at what kind of sections of floristry you want to go into um I've got a couple of florist friends that hate doing weddings it's just too much stress for them um but they love doing kind of funeral work and you know and then another couple that like doing more party based stuff and kind of corporate stuff so there's uh, whereas I love doing weddings and that's kind of why we um got rid of the shop just because it was too much of a tie um and just remember it's ridiculously hard work because when I I didn't realize how hard work it was <laughs> so even though like when people say to me oh you know I, that's kind of the first thing I say it's not easy it's not like you know a beautiful bunch of peonies on on Instagram and you know like rocking up to flower market with a dog there's a lot of dogs going on at my flower market right. a lot of lovely looking florists in wafty skirts and a dog under their arm oh. um <laughs> but it's not I, I don't um it's not it's not it's an amazing job but it's bloody hard that's what I would say and I think it's going to get harder because there are so many people that that oh Millie um there are so many people wanting to become florists yeah that's because you've you made found it that. beautiful. Huh? Because you've made it look too beautiful. You see, everyone thinks no. it. <laughs> I think people, a lot of the time, I think some of my brides have even become florists. Um, a lot of bri- I think a lot of brides get married and then want to do something in the wedding industry. Mm. Um, yeah. I found. I guess it's like a happy, it's a happy job it's a creative job it's so it's like you've got that beautiful outlet you get the big energy hit off the flowers do you know what I mean you get that boost don't you working with beautiful things they don't answer back um so mm. I a lot of, yeah I think it is one of those things people always say oh I always wanted to be a florist um but yeah I mean I have a flower school so obviously I encourage that <laughs> do you know what I mean oh, absolutely. no I, I think it's brilliant I don't I think it's a wonderful job I just think 
I because I I think because I didn't realize how hard everything else was that it's not you don't just rock up on a Saturday obviously I knew that bit um, and just put flowers down and then you get to go home and that's it for the week you know it's a full-on it's a full-on job I'm working harder or I've worked harder in the last 15 years than I ever did don't tell my colleagues uh at the BBC but um yeah it's 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 never ending and if it's your own business there's always something that you're thinking about um I think that's it yeah so I think that's a really good point if if um if you do want to be a florist then you are going to work for yourself that's the hard bit especially now in like the COVID-19 situation um like all my staff are furloughed so I'm doing everything you know and that's yeah doing everything um so yeah you have to be the marketing department you have to be you know, all the bucket washer, you have to be all of those, you know, all of those things when you have yeah. Your, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one thing I just didn't really think about. Um so it's yeah, it's, it's an amazing job and I wouldn't change it. But it yeah, it's it's hard work, but it's amazing you work. work. Like are you a planner like right, the next five years I'm gonna do this, or do you just like go year to year and see what happens? How do you plan your life? You don't have to answer that. I don't I don't have like an end goal I don't I don't I know like you've got your flower school which is amazing um kind of where I am there's just not the the way I would want to do it it's kind of similar to the way you do it you know in kind of your the way you're kind of the way you you've got your setup it's brilliant there's just kind of nowhere really around here that I can kind of space wise um do anything similar and I wouldn't want to do it just you know keep going to the back of a pub or do you know what I mean like I just want I want it more um so I don't have like I, I do want to do some more teaching I just need to work out how and where um so we do kind of wreath wreath workshops every year and I love them um we just have the best fun and it's just brilliant but I just need to kind of work it out but generally I just want to keep doing what I'm doing that's what you've got to do you've just got to come to Yorkshire and just do it use my <laughs> yeah <laughs> is minutes away. just have more room um yeah I just want to kind of keep what I'm doing keep doing what I'm doing just keep making people happy with flowers and making pretty weddings that's kind of and if I can do that for the next five years I'd be happy Yay! oh I keep going to the Maldives once a year <laughs> amazing I mean that's the goal <laughs> dream that is the dream i need to go back <laughs> so bad um brill awesome well i think that's exciting it's exciting for people to see your face because i know that's something that you don't put on your social media often um but i think i'm the- gonna try i'm gonna start doing it a bit more i'm gonna i'll appear on stories or something i know people people are like why don't you ever show your face i'm like mm because it's about my flower <laughs> it's not about my face <laughs> uh, no i will it's nice thank to thank you for inviting me. Yeah, pleasure. It's nice to hear your like where you've come from and what you're doing. And I think um it's just nice to talk to you in this crazy time as well. It's nice to be able to chat to like-minded people that you know we do the same thing and we kind of get each other, don't we? We do, we do. It's yeah, it was a brilliant uh, I think when we when we first met, when Instagram wasn't a thing, was Instagram a thing? I don't think we, so. We met Twitter, by didn't Twitter, didn't we? um yeah we just got on really well from the beginning and then yeah then you ended up did you was it an accident that you ended up in the same corridor or were you just um (laughs) were you just following me (laughs) where were we going we were going back to Devon and you were doing a wedding yeah I know you're 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 like where we're Cheltenham you're in Cheltenham oh I'm in Cheltenham what (laughs) that was so weird we had a I think we had a wedding at the Bath Spa I think um yeah I think that was there yeah and so we just kind of well isn't there because Rob your husband is from York isn't he he is yes he is hooray yeah I love a flat vowel (laughs) and a flat cap (laughs) just a flat vowel to be honest (laughs) a flat vowel a whippet and a Betty's box yeah what more is there (laughs) Brill, well thank you darling thank you so much for talking to me it's been and I will link all of your magical stuff on the video but yeah cool so I'll say goodbye now
speak to you in a bit. All right. Bye.